Hey, this is Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub. Coconut Man on the forums had a question about using three Boolean controls in LabVIEW to pick one of three states. And um, when you click one of the buttons, have the other buttons kind of um, unpress. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick in LabVIEW. I'm going to hit Control N to bring up a new VI. And then I'll hit Control E to show the block diagram. Um, and so we'll do this using an event structure. So I'll start by placing a while loop. I'll just use quick drop to do that. And I'll give myself a stop control. Then I'll jump back to the front panel and I'm going to place three buttons. So I'll use my silver palette, choose Boolean, and um, I guess we'll do an OK button, a home button, and let's do a help button. So now we have three buttons. And you can see we have the three of them on the block diagram. So if I run this like this, um, when I click on one of the buttons, they don't stay depressed. So let me stop that, and I'm going to right click on them, and I'm going to choose mechanical action, and switch when released. I'm going to do that for each of them. Right click, mechanical action, switch when released. So now I'll run the VI, and you'll see that uh, when I press a button, it stays down until I unpress it. And I can have multiple buttons pressed at the same time, but that's not actually what we want. So I'll hit stop, and then inside my while loop, I'm going to place an event structure. So on the block diagram, right click to bring up the functions palette and say structures and event structure. I'll place that inside the while loop. And by default, you get a timeout case. So if no event occurs, this case will execute. And in the upper left um, is the timeout. So I'm going to right click and create a constant. By default, it's negative one, which means that this event structure will sit and wait until some event occurs. But we don't necessarily want that because if we're in a state, we want it to output values. So I'm going to change this to, I, I typically do like 33, because um, that gives you about 30, which would be like 30 frames a second is the way I think about it. It doesn't really matter, just some time out there. Then I'll right click on the timeout and say add event case. So this is how you add different events. And I'll come in here and I'll pick the OK button. And by default, it says value change. And I'll hit OK. So this basically says when the value, uh, the OK button's value changes, this event structure case is going to execute. And you can see just like a, a case structure, I can switch back and forth between the sub diagrams. So I'll right click on it again and choose um, add event case and home button and value change, and then right click and add event case and help button and value change. So hit okay. And now you can see I have all of my cases. So when the home button, or well, sorry, when the okay button is pressed, I want to, um, unpress the home and help buttons. So I'm going to right click on it, uh, on the home button, and choose create a local variable. And I'll place that inside the event structure. And then I'll right click and create a constant and set it to false. So now when I get an OK um, button press event, the home button will be set to false. Same thing for help, right click on it, um, choose create and local variable. I'll place that in and I'll just wire it to the same false constant. Now I need to do that for when the home button's pressed. So in this case, I want OK and help. So create local variable and right click, create local variable, and then right click, create a constant to get a false constant. I'll wire that to both of those. So when you click home, OK and help become uh, unpressed. And then finally for help, right click, create local variable. And you can actually copy and paste a local variable and then select from it. So I need OK here. And then I will create a constant. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this. And if I press OK, that's good. And you can see now when I click Home, OK was depressed. So let's um, tile this real quick. I'll maybe make the block diagram just a bit bigger. And I'll turn on Highlight Execution Mode. So you can see um, our timeout case is executing every 33 milliseconds. But if I click the Help button, um, you can see the Help event executed here. So I'll go ahead and click stop. And since we're in highlight execution, it's going to go a little bit slow, but there we go. Um, so this is how you can create three buttons to give you three different cases um, and do three different things based on them. So you can do whatever you want in the event structure, but really what you're probably going to want to do is do this uh, with a case structure as well to constantly do some output because when one of these cases doesn't execute, the timeout case executes. 
So this might be where you actually write your value um, and you somehow pass it which case you're, ex like what state you're in basically. So you could do that by, for example, passing out the, the Boolean value of all of these controls. Um, so let's say we go into our timeout case and we could put all three of these controls in here and um, basically use these to execute some case. So one way to do that is to place a case structure. And I'm going to build the Booleans into a Boolean array. And then wire that into my case, uh, sorry. Where, uh, build them into a Boolean array and then use the Boolean array to number VI. So this takes those and builds them into a number. And then let's just use a one button dialog. And we'll use the uh, number to string, if I could type. Uh, we want decimal uh, number to decimal string, here we go. And so I'll just pass it that value and then pass that to a one button dialog just so we can see what case we're in. And um, we'll do this in, um, let's do this in the default case actually. So I'll cut that and paste it in the default. And then, um, so I'm gonna get rid of the, the one case just because I don't wanna create all the different cases, but that's where you'd add the, the different states that you want. So now I'll run this and you can see zero, 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 and I probably should have put a delay there. So let me see if I can stop this quick. Okay, so stop the VI there. Um, I'm gonna change this timeout to one second. Um, actually, let's go more than that, let's go two seconds. So now you can see we're in the default case, we get a zero, we get a zero. If I click the okay button, we get a four. Um, because that is the most significant bit. Four, if I click home, uh, we should get a two now. And if I click help, we should get a one. So this is basically, you can think of a binary, the, the one's place, two's place, four's place. Um, so there you have it, using three Boolean controls to choose different states. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects. And ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.